Well, welcome everybody. Let's get started here real quick. I'm going to stand up. Just for a sec. How many of you are not on the Wi-Fi? Would you like the Wi-Fi password? No? We're good? Yeah, it's uh, branded research. And the Wi-Fi password is branded 123. All lowercase, no spaces. It's good to have you here. Welcome to the Media Leaders B2B Apps panel discussion. I've got four pretty rad guys here. I wish I had women. If you have a B2B app for the next one, I would like to do an all-woman thing. I think it'd be really great for all of us, especially me. And uh, now there's a few rules we're going to have tonight. First of all, we're going to keep it very tactical. So these guys are going to do their pitch. It's actually about them. Normally, I just do it about you guys. But these guys have a lot of really cool things going on, and I want to see them all be very, very successful. So they're going to practice in front of you. That's why this is small and intimate and a lot of fun. So number one, tactical. There's no pressure on them. We're just going to have some fun. Number two, this building is going to get torn down soon. It's kind of sad. You're actually sitting inside of, or um, we're going to enjoy this event inside of, the former personal theater of Howard Hughes. Did I get that right? As far as I know. Yeah. So it's pretty exciting. We're here at the Santa Monica Airport, Building D. And uh, a lot of these guys, are, there's a lot of apps and startups in this building. So we're going to get started. My name is Josh Oaks with Media Leaders. You have a piece of paper here that uh, at the bottom you have at Media Leaders and MediaLeaders.com. All that I ask is that as we go through tonight, I'm going to give away a few hundred dollar gift cards. I've actually got two from Google. They're Google AdWords hundred dollar gift cards. There is a limitation, you have to spend $25 to unlock the rest of the 100 but it's pretty cool, and they're yours, you just have to ask, one, you have to have downloaded the apps, and that's why I want you on the Wi-Fi, and two, you just ask some great questions. Give these guys a hard time, because we're here to make sure they are successful. So you can, all of their websites are on here, and you can access their app by going to their website, ticker.me, lettuceapps.com, getatlas.com, and getunity.com. If you use hashtag MLApps, I will uh, ask your question or at least be tracking it. And we're gonna start here in just a sec. Here's what I'm gonna do, first of all, a few things. One, each one of these gentlemen is gonna introduce himself and say in 30 seconds or less what their app does. So then we're gonna go around, once they each one has done that, we're then gonna get a use case out of it, a little bit more detail. Tell us about the really cool things. And then the next question we're gonna ask them is, what's your biggest struggle? And this is a chance for them to be really honest so that we can get inside and find out what that struggle is, whether it's development, money, uh, getting people to just download the app, try it, get a friend to download it. And then last, we're gonna talk about overcoming that. You guys can open it up to some Q&A. Cool. I have a question. Yes. Do you have any more of those sheets and can you repeat the password? Absolutely. Password is branded123. Here's an extra sheet for you to pass back to her if you don't want to. Absolutely. Thank you. You're very welcome. Cool. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna close this door. Is it gonna get really hot in here? It's gonna get really hot in here. Cool, we'll leave it open. <laughs> awesome. That was a good chance for Red to take his jacket off because he wants yeah, to look all suave. Yeah, I was gonna see if we can shut the outside door. Uh, hey, Red, why don't you start? All right, I'm Rhett McNulty. I run uh, business development and customer acquisition for an app called Unity. Uh, Unity is a personal cloud service that gives you access and the ability to consume all of your files across any of your devices at any time, even if you're not in front of that device. Awesome. Don't okay. be shy. My turn. All right. Uh, hi, I'm Rod Moroom, and I'm the CEO of Lettuce. Uh, lettuce is a curated salad site. We send people with it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we do order management software for inventory-based businesses that sell across multiple sales channels. Good evening, I'm Nick Lumena, and I founded the app Ticker, which is a social content app that allows you to follow your friends and your interests. And for the first time, you can see what people are looking forward to and counting, counting down to. So whether that's a product release, or a movie, or a birthday, or retirement, so that's Ticker. I'm Michelle Bayon, I'm the co-founder of Atlas. Get Atlas.com. Atlas, uh, we're trying to create a whole new paradigm for scheduling 
that instead of happening from your desktop with a bunch of screens and emails and calendars and all that stuff, it's all just from your mobile device. Um, Atlas is the only mobile planner that lets you schedule anything with anyone across any calendar. So what that means to you guys is no more emails back and forth to find a time with one or many people. No more fumbling with attachments and wondering, well, I'm on Google. I don't know if that guy's on iCal or if she's on Android or whatever. Atlas just handles all that nonsense for you so you can uh, save time and money and get the appointments to happen better. So how many of you have downloaded Get At or Atlas? And I, I call it Get Atlas because I like to use two words. I'm on the waiting list. You're on the waiting list? Oh. You're all okay. going to be on the waiting list. Sorry. <laughs> we had a lot of downloads today. So it launched today, technically. <laughs> Congratulations. What's your biggest What's your biggest struggle today? Like you, you, you've worked really hard. You got a team of how many people? And then what's um, your biggest struggle? There's uh, There's eight of us full time. Um, everyone is dev except for me and a marketing assistant. Um, we also have a couple of dev people that are part time as well. Um, our biggest challenge is is the, is the tech because we're building a very 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 complex technology. Um, like you know, in programming, like if you if you put something here, and then you leave, and then you come back, it's pretty much always where you left it. But with with scheduling, if you put something here and you leave and you come back, it depends on how much time has elapsed and how much what what happened to everyone else. It, it might be here, or it might be there, or it might be there. So it leaves a lot of variables that have to happen in order to connect a lot of people. And we're trying to make iPhones and Androids talk to each other, and Outlooks and Googles talk to each other, and keeping track of who's on what time zone and all that kind of stuff. So there's so many little details that that come into play, which is why we sort of only allowed you know like the first like sort of 500 or 1,000 people in today, because we want to sort of see, let it happen step by step, so we can kind of get the kinks out of the system, so we don't have like 10,000 pissed off people on day one. We only maybe have a couple people that are really patient early adopters in the beginning. So for us, the the the, the biggest te challenge right now is, is technology, and I think the second one is going to be. Um, you know, communicating the message and, and getting the word out. Awesome. Let's go down to Rhett. Rhett, what's your big, biggest challenge with what you do? I think the biggest challenge for us is is marketing and gaining traction with users. I mean, if you if you look at if you look at the environment 15 years ago, you see that users had one connected device most likely. Today, they have three to four connected devices. Um, that's spreading your files across multiple devices and forcing them into uh, the cloud and <clears throat> therefore brands device makers uh, public you know cloud services internet service providers mobile phone carriers they're all marketing the same message which is uh, get access to all of your files across all of your devices at any time but usually what's happening is that you're getting a certain access to a certain portion of your files and then they're forcing you to pay or upgrade to a paid account as you need to store more more files in their cloud. And so that's really taking away from the message that we're trying to portray, which is the same, get access to all of your files <coughs> across all of your devices at any time. Um, but we're building that within a personal cloud on top of your devices, therefore giving you essentially free access to your, to your own files. So I think that's that's there's a lot of noise in the market right now. Yeah, we're gonna come back to that here in just a sec. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Nick next. Nick, what's your what's your biggest struggle right now? Because you're brand new. Uh, actually, Nick, how old are you? Twenty two. Twenty two, and you're a senior where? At USC, about to graduate. Hopefully, I have a final tomorrow. So. Do we have some other folks <laughs> here as well? Awesome. Yeah, cool. USC right there. Yeah. Yeah. What's your biggest struggle? My final tomorrow. <laughs> you really have one? I do, no. Uh, on a serious note, uh, I'd definitely say development, like we're so small, we're so new, so it's finding the time and the resources to make kind of our vision come to life. Uh, and kind of a struggle that goes along with that is the real value of our app later down the road is for brands and celebrities and conferences to kind of promote their events in a fun, unique, social, viral way. Mm -hmm. So part of doing that, you know, we need to have the right features and infrastructure built for them. So we've had a lot of unique early interest from brands and celebrities, but you know, we need to build out those pieces first. Mm -hmm. So I'd say that's kind of a challenge right now. And it's, it's Rod? Rod. 
Rod. Yeah. yeah, which is awesome because it's spelled R A A D. Is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, parents like to smoke weed, so. I bummed about something. Yeah. Rod, so what's your, what's your big <laughs> <week? laughs> I love your. Your intro I love how I make jokes to people who have no idea who my parents are. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. So uh, what's your what's your biggest struggle? Uh, our biggest struggle. Our biggest struggle is to get people to pay for our product. Um, we have a very very complicated product that we are trying to build and make it very simple. Um, I mean, the product is not complicated, it's the function itself. Order management, inventory management across multiple sales channels, like, that means we're integrating into about like, like 10 or 12 different systems uh, and making sure that they all work together in a <laughs> uniform way, which is insane. And I don't know why we're doing this. <laughs> 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 but, oh, but with that, we have a really great product, but we always get we always get customers who are like, "Oh, this is really awesome, but I wish it had like this little thing." <laughs> and until it has this little thing, I don't think we could use this. And so, so that's actually like the most annoying part about it. And it's tough because you spend ideally this like, you know, you look for evangelists. And, and people who are willing to try anything and play with anything and early adopters, but you spend all this marketing dollars, all this sales effort to to cast a wide net, and from that wide net, you get you know potentially thousands of interested people, but out of those thousands of people, you get like five or ten evangelists, and so so we need to figure out how to convince users that they don't necessarily need these little things, uh, and that ninety nine percent of what we what they want is already here, so that's interesting. Yeah, it's kind of a annoying problem. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. So, Rhett, how are you overcoming the the white noise out there that is too much marketing about what people think they're <coughs> going to get, but your app actually gives them what they always wanted all along? How are you overcoming that? Yeah, I think the the goal for us is to focus on product and. You know, as users see the functionality, actually use the application, they realize the differences between what we offer and what else is in market, and therefore they evangelize. Like Rod was saying, they'll start to evangelize the product and you know hit Twitter, hit the blogs, and start talking about what we're doing. But that's that's hard in itself. So it's for us, it's just heads down, uh, keep doing what we 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 think uh, is needed in the market, and 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 hopefully start to see some response over time. So what is your heads down, keep doing it? Give us an example. Um, development, listening to our users, listening to feedback. So our, our users are a, a, a big uh, portion of our roadmap. So every time we release uh, a new feature, um, you know, our, our support site usually gets hit up uh, both with issues, but also recommendations on new features or how we can build on top of the features we just released. So once we get enough feedback from our users, we'll make a decision on whether it's uh, worthy of making those, those improvements. And we'll do that. And, and when we do that, we actually really uh, see our responders, or see our users respond well to that. Very cool. So tell us about Atlas. What are you gonna do going forward? The next week is crucial. You're in Mashable today, right? Yeah. Um, we were we were in a bunch of stuff today. We were Mashable, TechCrunch, um, Next Web, and VentureBeat today. And uh, and we're going to be in Pando Daily tomorrow. Great. And um, and so we've gotten a good amount of press, and um, that's been a learning experience in and of itself. And I think that I, I totally agree with you that I mean for us right now it's all about feedback because there's so many different directions you can go with the planning and, and scheduling product. And, um, and there's so many different choices to make. Um, and I think that a lot of times, you know, founders just kind of left to their own devices will, will just kind of like go in a direction that is not necessarily the direction that the market wants. And we've got a lot of passion on our team for what we think Atlas should be. And I think that the feedback that um, we're gonna get from our users is gonna be the thing that's gonna help us focus on where do we go next and, and what do we do next? Because at the end of the day, like we're not building an app for ourselves, we're building it for other people. And so getting that feedback is really critical and 
we've got a really cool tool in the app that if you give feedback, I was telling you, 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 can, you can see what other people think, what other people's ideas are. If you like someone else's idea, you can vote for it and kind of up it, up yeah. the sort of priority level for us. And, and um, we really kind of like celebrate people that are really active in the community. And that's just in your support area. If, yeah. you, if somebody has an idea in the app, they say, hey, I think it should, uh, I don't know, I should be able to put a background wallpaper and people can vote that up to number one and yeah. you'll work on it there. Mm -hmm. That's a very clever idea. Nick, what are you gonna do? You're graduating USC soon. Very exciting, you're in a startup. What are you gonna do over the next month after you graduate? Yeah. Sleep. <laughs> no, no uh, the next month, <laughs> the next month is gonna be gonna be exciting. I mean, we're, right now we're like you were saying too, like listening to your early users and creating the vision moving forward. So we're looking to revamp our app and improve our user interface and user experience, and also um, trying to map out strategic partnerships with brands and entertainment companies, uh, and also see, you know, yeah, we're a social app, but maybe we can have more of a more of a business model with like providing a platform for conferences to, to run all their events with, with, within our system. It's a genius so. idea. It's a really genius <laughs> idea. That's cool. So. Cool. How many downloads do you have? We're close to getting 6,000 downloads. So it's been out there a couple months. We haven't done a lot of press. It was featured on KTLA, which helped us quite a bit. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we're at, a, we're at a cool place where we have these early users. We're kind of seeing what's working, what's not working. And now it's time to continue building and, and execute on what is working. So, All right, let's do one more thing. We're going to do a use case, and we're going to raise our hand to vote on what the best we think the best pitch is through a use case. And one of these guys, no, I'm serious. We're gonna, you're on the hot seat. Why not? It's good, it's good for you. I mean, we're, this is a loving crowd, right? That's right. Uh, we're going to do a use case. We'll do another. You guys already gave your pitch and all your, your stuff. Now we're going to slice down to it. This is where I have a lot of fun. We get to the no BS tactical results. We're going to start with Rhett. Give us a use case that's 25 seconds or less that's really good. I have to give you two. I'm going to give one consumer one and then one business one. All right, make them good and make them short. I think it's a good one. So from a consumer. All right, ready? Here we go. We're From good. a consumer perspective, you might be out to dinner with your friends. One of them says, hey, I'm going to Hawaii on vacation this summer. Do you have any tips? And you might say, yeah, I've been there a few times. I haven't been in five or six years, but let me show you some pictures and video from my trip. And then you can see the places I went, the beaches and the, and the hotel I stayed at and the places I was visiting. And so you can pull up with Unity any of those pictures or video, even though it's, not in, it's, it's likely not on your phone and it's probably on your home computer you can access all of that content from that location and stream that real time to your phone. Um, from, a, from a business perspective, you might, you might have been on your way here tonight and you were supposed to get out a, a, a proposal to a client, but you were in a hurry and forgot. You're on your way over here, you have a couple of choices. You can turn around, go back to the office and send that proposal out, or you can wait till the next day and send that proposal to your client late, in which case they might get upset. With Unity, you'd be able to grab that file from your work computer and then forward that on to the client. That's very cool. So two different use cases, one B2C, one B2B. That's right. Cool. Tell, give us the use case for lettuce apps. 30 seconds or less. All right. So you have a t-shirt brand. Uh, you're just getting started. Uh, you want to get into a bunch of retail stores, so you're selling B2B. Uh, and then you also want to sell direct through direct to consumer through your, your website. So you have like a Shopify store. Uh, so you're selling through all these uh, different channels uh, and you're getting all of these different orders. All those orders come into our system. Uh, so now you can manage them in one place versus separate systems. Uh, and now you have to fulfill all these orders, which means you gotta take this order information and manually type it into multiple backend systems like accounting customer management, shipping, credit card processing, and inventory. Uh, so what we do is now that all those orders in our system, uh, we integrate into all those commonly used backend systems like QuickBooks, for example, for accounting. So now when you're ready to process and fulfill an order, no more manual data entry. You click one button that says process and it does it all for you in seconds. And we reduce like the whole process by 98%. Sweet. Very cool. All right, don't get excited yet. Let's come, Nick, uh, you're next. Let's see who you're next. 
I thought you were going to skip me. Okay, so if you're a brand or company trying to engage your audience about an upcoming event, what most people do is they'll put up a simple countdown on their website. But truth is that countdown's only good when you're on the website. What if you want to remember when that count countdown is going to expire? What if you want to share it with your friends? So what we can do is provide you with a system and platform to engage your audience, create a viral countdown that people can like, tweet, and share across all social uh, networking platforms, and at the same time, add that to their upcoming tickers and receive a push notification on their phone. Very cool. All right, let's hear it, Atlas. Okay, um, so you can do a B two B and a B two C. Okay, great. So it's kind of the same thing whether you're a real estate agent, um, you're a insurance salesman, you're a pharmaceutical sales rep, whatever. Your life, if you're a business developer or a salesperson, is based upon, and your income is based upon making appointments. Um, with Atlas, what you would do is if I want to make an appointment with a customer, I open up my Atlas, I'm in my calendar, it reads and writes from anything I happen to use. If I use Google or Outlook or whatever, I can read and write from it right from inside Atlas, make the appointment just like any other normal calendar. The only difference is that instead of just sending one time over, I can just touch empty spaces in my calendar and send over up to three times to another person. And those three times basically get injected into the other person's calendar. So they see those three times in yellow with all of their appointments around them. So in just a second, they can see which time is the best time. They just touch it and it automatically writes into both of our calendars. Doesn't matter which calendar we both use, what phone, what computer, it's irrelevant. It writes into both of our calendars automatically. On the uh, B2C side, which is kind of also B2B, imagine you're trying to get some buddies together for a golf game, or you're a direct seller. Let's say you do Stella and Dot jewelry, for example, and you have uh, parties at your house or at your friend's houses, and you're inviting a bunch of girls over, you wanna hang out and have some wine and check out some jewelry. Um, you wanna invite a bunch of people. Normally the way it's done in the business now is you set a date, and then you invite a bunch of people, you pray that as many of them can make it as possible, and whoever shows up, shows up, right? What you do with Atlas instead is you send three times. You're like, hey everyone, I'm gonna have a party where I want all you guys to come over and hang out and try on jewelry and drink wine and smoke weed if it's yours, his family and mine. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, then they, and then those those three times get injected into everyone's calendar, but instead of them finalizing, they all vote. They say either it's great, it's okay, or I can't do it. And you get a matrix back that lines, everybody, lines all those times up so you can see which one is the one that the most amount of people can make. You touch the one that the most amount of people can make and it writes it into all those people's calendars and now you have the party on that date where the most amount of people can come. Very cool. All right, raise your hand if you liked Rhett's at the end with Unity. The best use case. Doesn't mean you like his app better, but it's pitch. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't about, like it. What about oh, the time limit? Rhett. Yeah, Rhett went all over. We love Rhett. How about Lettuce app? <laughs> how about Ticker with it. Nick? I really like it. Yeah. Okay, how about <laughs> Final Atlas at the end? Feels like it's Atlas. The length? With lettuce at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Well, I, th I think you guys are incredible, but let, let's do this. Let's open it up. Why don't you guys give them some hard questions? Uh, how many of you have an app that are sitting in, in the crowd today? You, you have a startup, an app? Raise your hand if you have a small business that you own right now. Or Very cool. In, in the front, what do you do here? Uh, I run a creative agency. Um, we actually build apps for people. OK, so very cool. Yeah, I don't in, have a in the back? What do you guys do? Uh, ra yeah, ra whoever raised their hand that owns their own business in the in the fancy suit, the oh, fanciest no. guy in the room. Yeah. What do you do? <laughs> no, I'm just even swimmer. I I help companies with web strategy and I produce websites and apps. Yeah, the other guy too. I like you, Stephen. Though you're awesome. Um, we do cloud infrastructure for apps. Okay, very cool. What questions do you have for these guys? They're going to be somewhere in the next six months. I mean, they're hustling now, but in the next six months, you're going to see them in more mashable stuff, really cool things. They're taking a lot of risks. So you've got them early. One of us tweeted a question because we were supposed to. I know, but <laughs> looking down feels rude. You did a great job. I'm going to retweet the question, but looking down feels so, doesn't it? Do you want me to ask the question? Yeah, please. OK, so, so why apps? What led you to this area of technology? So I actually had a, a digital agency before Atlas, and um, it was right at the cusp of when mobile was just getting started. Um, we did one of the first, you know, a bunch of early apps, and uh, basically what happened was, was uh, I just realized there was a lot of opportunity in that industry, um, and I, I, I happened to bump into a guy. I had a girlfriend at the time who um, 
was working in a direct selling company called Prepaid Legal, which is now called um, Legal Shield. And um, her, the, one of the guys that was her sales leader was my, my soon to be partner. And so she introduced him to me and we realized that, that that industry was extremely behind on technology and like the whole idea of mobile was just like they were, it was like iPhone had been out for four years and they were still thinking Blackberry was like the newest thing in the world. <laughs> and across an industry of $150 billion and 92 million sellers around the world. And so we just saw there was an opportunity there uh, to serve that market. And as we started exploring features and uh, talking to leaders, we realized that um, this whole sort of planning and appointment negotiation thing was not only something that could help them, but could really help any person that sells or schedules a lot. And, uh, and, and, and it just became obvious that there really wasn't anything to do scheduling on, on mobile. There was, there was like all these kind of sexy calendar apps like uh, you guys have seen like Tempo and Sunrise and Fantastical who give you a really great interface um, but don't really give you anything that's like dollars and cents value. It's like a bunch of nice to have stuff. And then there's like the web scheduling stuff like Tungle, which unfortunately got shut down after they got bought by RIM and Schedule Once and all these guys that are kind of really functional but not really good on the user experience scheduling tools. And we realized that if we could bring scheduling to mobile, which is where everything was going anyway, but also have a little bit of sexy mixed in, we could kind of marry useful and sexy. And mobile was just the place to do it. It wasn't like I'm gonna do mobile, it just it became obvious that it had to be mobile. Well, I'm gonna use your app because I need it for, uh, I schedule people, so I work with people. It's gonna be very helpful for me. So. I think a lot, I think it, it, the one, the nicest thing that each one of you can do tonight is just go download all of their apps, even if you're on the waiting list. And he's gonna unlock the waiting list here soon. Uh -huh. And use it. So it's not gonna be for very long. And if you like it, rate it a five star review. As a, as a published author, it means the world to me if someone actually gets a tidbit from my book and rates it nicely. If you show me five stars and a good review, then I'll unlock you right now, bud. In the far back. Just down there. I'm just curious, do any of you guys have a strategy to market your product to corporations? Um, like to have large user groups through corporations and if so, how would you address like the IT team and their security concerns? That's wow. good there. Wow. Painful. Oh man, that's a good uh, So right now we don't go <laughs> positivity. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> these yeah. are the real answers. This is why I love these yeah. guys. Um, so like right now like our business we don't go after like really really big companies yet we go after like businesses that are doing at least 100k a year up to about 25 million um and so at that point we're dealing with just like the owner or someone within the company uh if there's like 50 people or less uh when we will down the line go after like big enterprise customers uh the way you deal with it it's kind of like sh like i know there's like this whole trend of like everyone it's like the catchphrase of the consumerization of the enterprise. Um, and basically what that means is a lot of times people are bringing their own device to work now. Uh, people are starting to use different softwares uh, you know, on their own. They don't necessarily get permission from their company. And so what happens is if you have some really cool like sharing features within your product, so someone downloads it or someone you know, signs up for your service and then they share it with another coworker, it catches on from bottom up versus top down, uh, which is a huge shift that's kind of happening. And that's like a pretty cool thing. And so, you know, we'll have internet. Unless you're an IT professional. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> your, your job is tough. There's no point for you anymore. Um, <laughs> as, as we go towards now, I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, there's this whole, and this is like the most boring conversation of all time, um, but typically like, Five years ago, everything was on premise, which means everyone had their own servers. Everything was at their at their office or building or whatever. Now everything is shifting towards a cloud, uh, so that means there really isn't a use for IT anymore, uh, which is like the sad thing for those guys. But uh, luckily, they can be. Yeah, I mean, there's just no really need to talk to IT anymore. Unless you're dealing like with like a super giant, like, giant. I mean, like Coca Cola. Like NASA, you know what I mean? Like where they have so, you know, what I mean? it's like, I mean, like crazy security issues where they for sure have to have an IT department. Um, if if that's not the case, then it's really like bottom up now. No more top down. Well, it's changing. There's a 
there's a progression of change, right? So there, there'll be IT for a while. It's it's a, it's a matter of how long it'll take to mm -hmm. ship. But yeah, there's the yeah. BYOD, big BYOD movement to get, you know, allow people to take their own devices into work. And there's probably a lot of IT professionals that are that are trying to protect against that because of the security risk. So let me ask you guys. Can I add one, one question yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I, I want to be able to give you some value, and and we we tried to go after some really really large like multi billion dollar companies early on, mm -hmm. and uh, we failed to to sell any of them. And um, but we learned a lot along the way. And so what I can share with you about that is, um, it's a very very complex sale. There's a great book that I read that really helped a lot called Hope Is Not a Strategy. That's all about uh, selling into complex organizations where there's there's no like one decision maker. Like, Somebody tweet like, that. Hope is not a strategy. Quote it and put the hashtag because I'll save it. I'll go buy it. Seriously, it's, it's a good book. It's about selling into large corporations and how there's many many stakeholders and, the, and managing the politics of it all. And you know we went we were talking to a company for so long that like the department we were talking to was like restructured twice during the time that we were doing it. And every time it was like back to zero all over again. And um, so what I can tell you is it's is um, first of all, don't try to sell them something that they're not sure that they want, because it'll never happen. They've gotta know that they want something like what you've got, and it's just a matter of is it you or is it someone else? And, and really manage the relationships really clearly, and don't be afraid to ask people like really straight questions, like you know, what do you need to see in order to do a deal with me? Or is there any, if I, if I, if I take out this objection and this objection, will we have a deal? You know, like ask questions like that because it's such a cloudy environment that every time you think you're somewhere, all of a sudden all this other shit comes up. Pardon my French. And you're like, well, wait a minute, you didn't tell me that. And you're like, yeah, well, you know. And so, you know, you really got to sort of, it's the, the complex sale that I've learned was all about trying to find the objections and kill them one by one by one and just keep cornering them into a place where they, they don't say yes, but they just they run out of no's. You know? Thank you. For whatever that's worth. Please just raise your hand. Oh, Each no. one of you, how do you find your clients? I mean, I'll start with you in the purple shirt. Well, we're, we're really consumer focused. So, you know, we work on efforts to make sure our clients can find us. But usually they're looking to solve a problem. That problem is, you know, the device or file fragmentation. Their stuff is everywhere. They want access to it. They don't want to configure things and they don't want to pay for things. So they're trying to find a service that, that fulfills that or solves that problem. And so we, we do that in a, in a multitude of ways. That, that might be uh, via <coughs> press, uh, that might be via our own blog, communicating to our, our social networks like Facebook and Twitter, um, and generally getting users to communicate that to their friends. It's like grassroots marketing via It's very social grassroots. Media. That's why we, I mean, we're such a small team. Mm -hmm. It's a problem. Like, probably most of us are, are very small teams. So you don't have huge budgets to go out and market your product. So what you can do is focus on your product, make sure that it works and it's good and that it solves a problem. And then, and then you know, start to attract users that way. But SEO is another, you know, another effort that people utilize so that when people are searching for, you know the problem that they're having, the solution for that problem, that they can easily find your your service. So it's it's getting you know differentiating yourself from the rest of the noise that's out there in the space, which is a hard thing to do. Is there any counterintuitive tip that you guys have that says, oh, I unlocked two thousand people with just this really cool connection? Or Let me give you an example. There is a website out there called AtThePool.com that maybe a lot of us have heard of, and it connects you with one individual each day and says, do this. Right? And I was telling Nick, because I'm kind of mentoring Nick in a way, and, and trying to say, here's a bunch of other different ways you could slice your app and, and pitch it. And I was telling Nick, I was like, well, maybe there's a way to go to, like At The Pool did, they were smart. Alex, the founder there, said, I'm gonna go to conferences. I'm gonna say, why don't we create a social network around your conference, and we get all, 20,000 people are gonna go to CES, well that's not an example, but 100,000 people, let's say you land at CES, you're gonna get probably 10% of those people to jump onto some kind of a social network, 5% of them, and all of a sudden you got a ton of those people jumping in his network. Great way with one, let's say 100 phone calls to that company, but you get 5,000 people, pretty awesome way to get a ton of people. I was telling Nick that. 
Why couldn't you sell to the big? Just like Linda just said, how do you get your bigger core customers or clients? Do you guys have any techniques? Like you get, you speak at a conference and you get 25 small businesses that do 1 million in revenue to use Lettuce app? You have a really good app. What's that? You have a very good app. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the honest answer is we haven't figured out a way to get a crazy amount of users. We have a couple ideas. Um, so, for example, like this is a this is like a really interesting idea. So we do invoicing within our system, but we never we never really sent it out, like sent invoices. Like you can create an invoice, but we never allowed you to email invoices. And so FreshBooks, which is an, like an invoicing software, they have 5 million users. I talked to the founder and this is what he told me. I was like, how did you get big? And he's like, by providing really great customer service. And I was like, okay, bullshit. How did you really <laughs> get big? And, and he said, he's like, well, think about it. He's like, so we were like one of the first pioneers of, of online invoicing. And so you create an invoice, but it doesn't stop there. You send it to someone. So now you're sending an invoice. You know, the email address is like no reply at freshbooks.com. People are like, what is this FreshBook thing? They go check it out. They sign up. So, so you're you're using your users to basically send your brand to their network. Uh, and so that's exactly like what we're trying to do. We're actually like launching these features pretty soon. Um, and we have like a like three different uh, three or four different features within the product, and that's ideally like if you can have a product, uh, you know everyone says focus like I mean you said focus on your product and this is very true, but if you can have a feature within your product that allows your user base to get more users like unintentionally, that's an amazing thing that that is very powerful. Um, that's I think like the secret sauce. That's what we're trying to do too, guys. Is, is um, yeah, like yeah, that's a perfect. Yeah, yeah for us, it's just like you know, every time you invite someone to an, an appointment, you just want an appointment with them. But you know, the best thing for them to do is download Atlas. They don't have to. They can they can um, RSVP from the web without downloading it. But we hope that they download. do. And so, our one of our big things is like, how do we convert people? We know people are going to be inviting because they're downloading Atlas, right? And they're inviting people. That's why they got Atlas in the first place. So, how do we get those people that are invited to convert more? And then the second thing is we were talking about this earlier, guys, is, is influencers. Um, we're, we're, we, we have on the biz, dev, and sales side, we have very limited resources in everything. On the biz, dev, and sales side, we're focusing on that direct selling market. So like the Mary Kays, the Tupperwares, the Stella and Dots, like all these different direct selling companies. And we're, we're working with like eight or nine of uh, leaders in those companies, like people that have like 100,000 people on their team that every one of those people looks up to them, they're like, like they're the god of the business because that guy's making like $300,000 a month and you're making like $300 a month. And, um, and, and there's everyone in between, right? There's 150,000 people. And so we, get the, we find the guy that's got 150,000 people and we say, hey, if you try Atlas and, and you like it, you can proliferate, proliferate it out to your team. We'll give you training, we'll give you dedicated support, we'll give you a bunch of stuff to support you and, and, tutor and tutorials for your leaders to support you to get it out to those 150,000 people because we know that if we get 20,000 of them to download it, their whole business is based on invitations. If they invite two people a week, that's 40,000 invitations a week. That's four, eight, 12, 16, 160,000 invitations to Atlas going out every month if we can just get 20,000 people to start. So it's all about like just building that first base for us and getting the influencers. Yeah. Good. Another really good example of like this whole product, like right, 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 right thing, is like event, uh, Eventbrite. Like you create an event, and then you send that to like whether it's like ten people or like a million people. <laughs> it's and it's like and then in order to like get a ticket, you have to like type in your information and create this like like I call it like a sub account where it's not like a real account because you're not doing the function they intend you to do, but you're putting your information in. <laughs> and, and now they have your information. They can kind of start spamming you in a weird way. Um, and they do. And they oh, totally yeah. do. We, we jumped off of Eventbrite. I don't use it anymore because I got on the phone with their marketing team and said, you're emailing my people. I'm glad we're talking about this. You're emailing my people without my consent. And they flat out would email and say, we're Eventbrite, we're not Josh. But you can use us too. Oh, and I called the marketing people and said, this is not cool. 
and I raised my voice with them, and they said, no, and they used their BS lines. So this is why we're up here. You have to be careful. There's a gray zone. You guys are growing. Are you going to spam people? Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Because <laughs> the thing is, here's the thing. It's like, we'll, yeah. get, we'll get like one, maybe like 20 complaints in a year, but then we get like hundreds of thousands of customers. Email works. I can always send a gift basket there. It does, yeah. No, that's, I wish they would have done that. Yeah, yeah, I would have been their biggest fan. Yeah. All right, let me ask you about another thing. Two-step authentication. You're dealing with people's stuff. Oh, yeah. um, are you guys doing it? Who, who in this room is, uh, do you know, raise your hand if you know what two-step authentication mm -hmm. is. So let me ex give an example. I went to speak at UCLA recently, and their projector would not work with my laptop, and I use Google presentations, and they're like, oh, just pull it out, put it on PowerPoint. I was like, no, we do it in the cloud. Everything's cool. And then they said, oh, just log into our, put it in our computer. I was like, I'm not giving you my Gmail credentials. You got some hackers in here, they'll steal my stuff. But then I realized as I go these speeches, that's inevitably gonna happen. So I have two-step authentication. And it's really important these days, because how many of us, we've all gotten our email from a friend in a Yahoo account or an AOL account that says, hey, download these sexy pics and all that stuff, and they're hacked. Well, two-step authentication almost gets rid of that 100%. And I have a whole video on, on our media leaders thing, because I trained my team. When you log in from a new computer on Gmail and you know your password, it says, hey, go grab your phone. We sent you a text with a six-digit code. Put that six-digit code in, it verifies you really are Josh because you got your phone. You're not a hacker. Are you guys doing any of that? Yeah. So at UCLA, I could use their system, put my, my thing in, and I could get that code and still trust that even if they do, heaven forbid, have my password, they can't try and steal all my crap, right? We only do that though, like when someone is creating an account and they like send them an email to confirm to sign in, or if they like request to change their password, you can't just change it within Lettuce. It'll send you an email uh, to the email address on the account. You Got know, it. You can link back. Got it. We do something very similar. We we do a thing where if you sign up for Atlas, we'll let you send your first appointment, and we'll say, hey, um, we're letting you send this one, but. You haven't already verified your email. You're not going to be able to send another one until you in, in, until you verify your email. Yeah. And then once you verify your email, we unlock it, and you can send as many appointments as you want. Very cool. It's kind of like that. It's not exactly that. Yeah, two-step authentication really. Say, if you guys write that down, this is really huge, and I care about all you guys because you came out tonight. You want to protect your email and all your personal stuff, and your business runs on that inbox. And people would love to get a hold of that, so consider it. You only have to put the password in once a week or something like that. But it, I will never get hacked because of it. So people go, oh, the th but getting hacked is embarrassing to your clients. It's really embarrassing to your customers and your app holders. So just consider trying it. It's been a big deal for us. Good thing. All right, so give us what uh, we've already talked about next steps. We've talked about how you guys are hustling out there. And uh, how can we help? What can we do? We can all download the app. Right? The the There's the app. Yeah. You download the app and get feedback because we listen. Yeah. Is there a way to download your app without paying for it? Uh, so. <laughs> well, that's not what I meant. I'm just going to put it on the app. So, uh, are you guys on Twitter? What's that? Are you all on yeah. Twitter? Yeah, yeah, get Atlas. Yeah, we, we've. Uh, if Very you cool. use that piece of paper, you can uh, tweet at all of them. And uh, when are you coming off the, uh, when you back in the app store, so we off the wait list? It's in the app store, you can download it now. Um, there's basically two ways to get off the waiting list. One is if you find someone else who's an Atlas user already, uh, and they invite you to something, they automatically bump you off the waiting list and get you in. So it's kind of like, you know, if you know the bouncer at the club kind of thing. You know him. Yeah. Hi. 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 <laughs> and then, uh, and the other way is, it's, it's not gonna really be that long. We're, we're there's, there's, a real, there's actually a good reason. We're not just doing an, a waiting list to be like some douchey people that have like a waiting list. Like that's not why we're doing it. We're doing it because we want to just test the product and there's a lot of messaging going back and forth and back and forth and we, we just need to let people in in stages so we make sure that we don't just like kill it for everybody because the whole thing crashes because there's 100,000 messages going at one time or something. And um, so I, the waiting list shouldn't be that long. You know, it's not like mailbox where you have like four hundred thousand people in front of you. You'll have like three hundred people in front of you, and so it could be like any day. Basically, the next time we upload the next build, which will probably be in the app store by next week, it will probably unlock it for everyone that's, that's in. So take this home with you and try and download their stuff. 
they'd love to hear from you. If you use the support, you're probably going to be emailing one of these bozos up here, and they're going to get back to you. If you uh, you're going to get off the waiting list in the next week and, and support them. If you like what they're doing and you want to support them, if you think, oh, it's a four star, give them that five. It means a lot because they're going to make it better. It means the world to them. That's the icing on the cake. Yeah. Of the heart of the, the end of a hard week, you want those five stars. And every time they update their app, they lose a bunch of stars. So in a way, am I wrong? It resets. It's it resets, yeah. and they have to start all over mm -hmm. again. So if you can support these guys because they came out, it's kind of ironic because every time you make your app better, you lose all your ratings. Exactly, <laughs> it, it resets. It's like a, it's a brand crazy. new date all over again. Yeah. So, so if you can support them. Um, that would that would mean the world to these guys. And use their stuff and say nice things because they came out. And, Spend a lot of time with you guys, and now you're going to be able to go out and help them. Is there anything else you guys need from us? <laughs> yeah. If you have any friends that sell physical goods, please tell them about Lettuce and have them sign up and pay. <laughs> That's my goal. Have you talked to Busted Teas yet? Busted Teas? Yeah. No. I've heard of this. Yeah, it's like a bigger yeah. brand, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Stephanie knows them. Yeah. From um, <laughs> I used to work at College Humor. Oh yeah. So oh, that's they right. were. That's, yeah. yeah. That's where I know. They were a part of them. Yeah, I love College Humor. I just watched that video where they all sing that one song. Um, <laughs> oh, that's really <laughs> specific. <laughs> 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 I'm paranoid. I'm paranoid. I don't know what it is. Oh yeah. yeah. All right, let's give these guys <laughs> a round of applause for coming out. It's good to see you. There's gonna, hey, there's a few more beers out there if you want to grab one. And there's some fruit outside. I, I, it hasn't been supervised, so I don't know if I eat the fruit now. <laughs> <laughs> been an animal, but thanks for coming out. It's the last time you'll ever get to be in this building. It's going to get torn down soon. So breathe it in. Enjoy it. Take some pictures. Oh no, don't take the pictures. <laughs> You're gonna have to get a little bit in the building and then other buildings over there, the school. So you go any school, the first left inside of it, and the first left on the floor. Alright, so we're gonna fill that one out. There we go. That's how I saw it. That was very sweet of you. Um, you know, I think it's for fun. It takes away from the agency. It takes away from my agency. So I try and do it as much as I can, but it's good success. Yeah, we have a big network event on May 29th. Over 100 people in Santa Monica. It'll be a big one. It'll be good. Uh, no, it's just for um, That's a good question. We should probably theme it a little bit more. But it's a Sonoma Wine Garden. So, is anybody in marketing or advertising in tech that wants to do other professionals? So we need to get like this. So it's very weird as Deb and Lou Mitz. I'm just trying to get this three minutes of worship. I'm going to get this out. I know, there's another layer. Yeah, we're taking the I'll tell you there's something interesting. I've been to one of my social media I wrote a book on my and I developed a system of browser ways of approaching your customer that I used when I ran for a that works really well for small, small, small businesses that you have zero dollars. And so I put on these social media boot camps with 100 people in the room. I'm doing one of those on June 1st, and it's for really little bonus. It's $25, and it's a whole morning education by us. It's the best deal in town. We've done it for about 3,000 employees. Oh, not employees, but a little bit small. It's like, 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 but that, that's an interesting one for small, for 501c3s that don't know how to approach it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'm 